Stephen A., we can start with you because we've continued to see, I mean, the numbers are growing, we continue to hear the chance, and we continue to see the impact that Kobe had on L.A., this city, and this game. Well, listen, you know, you, you, all you got to do is think back. This was a man that won three championships with Shaquille O'Neal. Um, and if you remember at the time, there was some friction that was going on between the two. Shaquille O'Neal ultimately gets traded to Miami. The Lakers struggled for a few years. Kobe once sat up there and said, I'd rather play on the planet Pluto. He came on my radio show and said, I'd rather play on the planet Pluto than play for the Los Angeles Lakers. They pull off a trade. They acquire Powell Gasol. The next thing you know, they go to three consecutive NBA finals. They win back-to-back -back titles in 09, 010 um, of losing, losing to Paul Pierce in Boston before that, obviously. The bottom line is, is that this is a guy that personified everything that Laker Nation wanted their star to be about. He was completely and totally committed to excellence on the basketball court. Championships were their barometer. They didn't, want, they didn't care about division titles. They didn't care about just conference titles. It was about the chip. And this is what they wanted. And obviously off the court, the tireless effort that he put in to maintain a level of excellence spanning a 20-year career. When they think about Kobe Bryant, as a Laker, they're so incredibly grateful because there was a standard that he helped establish and reestablish for this franchise that spanned decades, and it kept Lakers lore exactly where Laker fans thought it should be. I keep talking about that there's a fraternity that you guys as former players share, and there's about 5,000 of them total. Uh, how do you describe what's been your reaction, the grieving process that honestly you guys have been going through since Sunday? You know, it's been, it's been really tough, uh, Maria. You know, initially hearing the news and still not believing it and, you know, talking to to old teammates and my fellow players amongst the league and former players is just something that it's hard to grasp right now. And it's just like I think right now uh, the guys, we are all using each other to just kind of get through these moments. You have to have a, a great support a sport group. It's like me and Kevin Garnett talk every day. I mean, he he – People don't know, but Kobe went to him when he first came out of high school because Kevin was was the first one to initially do it in the new era. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they developed a relationship. So, you know, they were like brothers. And he was the first call I got that morning. And, you know, he was crying and couldn't really process it. And so, you know, we talk every day to try to get through these moments. We use each other uh, as blankets. And, you know, I don't know if it'll ever end, but... You know, this is definitely a, a black mark on the game of basketball, you know, on the people, who other people who are involved in the crash on life. And it just, it, it brought realization to, realization to life for me. <clears throat> and I'll tell you one thing, it, it's changed me in a number of ways uh, with relationships I have around the NBA, uh, around family, around friends. And I've lost family members within the last six months, but this one was just different. Mm. This one was different. Um, you know, I even told my mom, I never had a relationship with my father. This prompted me to ask my mom if she can make that happen. Mm. And um, I don't know. It's just different. I mean, that's, that's the influence he's had. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.